Hi, I'm Mark Rothfield from Club Marine TV and today we're aboard the Genoa Yachts 60. We're in Melbourne, not the Mediterranean, but I'm certainly not complaining. This is one of the biggest and the best production boats I've ever tested. So come for a sail with us. Right now we've got about 17 knots across the deck. We're doing eight knots on this beautiful reach. These 60 footers just go through the water like nothing else. It's so powerful, yet so easy to sail. It wasn't so many years ago that you'd need, say, four to six crew to handle a boat of 18 metres in length. Nowadays, a couple can do it quite easily. In fact, it only takes one person to sail a boat. All the leads come back to this helm station. Right here, I've got the controls. Four buttons is all it takes to handle the electric winches. Throttle control, nice and well placed got the sight, the thrusters as well. This has got the optional stern thruster which retracts into the hull when you're not using it. Get just so much easier on a couple when they're in a berthy situation to use it. Again, all falls to hand. Just a lovely boat to steer. It's got the twin rudders, which I think is essential on a boat with this sort of beam. It's the new generation shape by Philip Briand. He has been around for many, many years with Genoa. In fact, he started in 1977 designing for them. And I think he's produced over 40 Genos in that time. So no one knows the DNA of this brand like Brion does. He's gone with the modern trend. So it's a wide hull, very beamy in amidships. That beam runs well aft, so you get lots of form stability. There's also a chine just above waterline that gives you that volume inside, a little bit more stability. So again, this is a real performance oriented hull. You could actually race it quite successfully and I think it would rate quite well. But at the same time, it can cruise really easily thanks to this rig setup. You draw about 2.2 meters. So again, when you're cruising, you can come into shore a lot further than a lot of other boats this size. What you really notice is just the power. Again, fingertip light, but we are moving through the water easily doing eight knots. Just doing a tack now. Leo spins around really well, it's very manoeuvrable. Again, this breeze is really starting to kick in now. Got a good 20 knots coming across the deck. Yet it just settles down onto that new tack really well. Doing about 40 degrees on the breeze. Speeds of 7.5 knots going up into it. Getting about 20 knots now. Really settled down though, the boat. Quite a chop here on Port Phillip Bay. Very easy motion through the water though. Lots of power driving through those swells. Oh, we are smoking along now, doing eight and a half, easily eight and a half knots on this reach. Man, you just want to keep going in this boat. The owner of this boat is actually talking about going into the Pacific, doing Vanuatu, even the Osaka race. So really comfortable for long range cruising. You know he's going to go long distances because one of the things he did is increase the tankage for the amount of diesel. He's installed a water maker on the boat too, which absolutely makes sense. Nothing can handle ocean like this. The gear is really manageable. So much design thought has gone into this transom area. These stairs hinge down from the transom, then you can step down and launch the boarding platform. This then gives you access to the garage. Inside there you can put a 2.9 metre tender, up to a 15 horsepower or even a jet. Then you look around, you've got to launch that, you've got its own remote control. In here there's an air pump to do all your water toys and you've got an outdoor shower. Fantastic area. It's pretty easy to see the Genoa 60 sitting in the med, somewhere in the Pacific, the Whit Sundays. So it really is all about the outdoor lifestyle. And for that, you need a great cockpit like this. You're looking at my number one favorite feature on the boat. As you can probably tell, I do love a barbecue. In this case, the molding rises magically out of the seat. You can lower it simply just by pushing a button and it all lowers back down. And then once it's down, it creates a seat, which is just fantastic when you're sailing. Passengers can sit behind the skipper. So moving forward, really simple matter of taking the steak straight to these tables. Twin tables in this situation, which leaves a nice walkway through the boat to get down to the companionway if you need it. These tables can fold out just to give you a little bit more space. Again, you can seat five or six people each side, so a really social area, and it can be covered by the hardtop in this situation. 
When you're sailing, lots of alternatives for sitting too. You know, if you're on a heel, you can move forward up here. There's this little lounge area, facing back, drink holder, just perfectly comfortable. And again, people will find the most comfortable seats, but there's so many choices here that you could sail with easily 10 to 15 people. One of the features of this boat is this spray dodger, which I think's been going to the gym. It's so big and so strong. You can take some spray. These clears are polycarbonate, so really good quality. Really nice sort of charcoal, graphite fabric. Again, really strong framing underneath it. So this mast has twin swept back spreaders. It's really well supported with the shrouds. The main shroud goes to the outside of the hull. The lower shroud is inboard and that leaves this nice clear passageway. In fact, the whole walkway from the aft to the forwards is clear of obstructions. These rails are about thigh height, which is really good. This boat's got the in-mast furling, which I think is fantastic if you're into cruising. There is a performance rig option, which is carbon, uh, it's slightly taller. Again, if you're into racing, you'd look at that, but this system works so well. All the control lines, everything come back underneath the coach roof to the cockpit, so you never really have to come forward, even for reefing. You can do that press of a button. I like the fact the halyards here can be tuned so that they stay up and you can tune them by with this track. Main sheet, furling, everything can be done, as I say, aft. This foredeck is massive. It feels like a catamaran in some ways. One thing you notice is maximum beam is about a midships and that allows this huge area up front. So this bow area is quite neat. The hull incorporates this bowsprit, which enables you to fly the Code Zero or Spinnaker. Also embeds the anchor system really neatly, gets it away from the hull. The other thing I like, it's got this electric furler, which just makes sail handling so much easier. Well, coming down into the saloon from the cockpit is actually really easy. Being open plan creates all sorts of options down here as well. Different entertainment zones, huge U-shaped dinette here. Um, this can actually lower as well into a coffee table. This little port side cabinet houses a washing machine, which is great if you're on the water for a long time, obviously. Your electrics are in the panel nice and close here, really easy to read. You've got your 12 volt and your 24 volt systems. There's a remote control for this that allows you, when you get off the boat, to switch the battery isolators. This boat has a system called CNAPS. It's brand new and it captures all the data that goes through the NMEA network. So you can access that from your mobile phone anywhere, right down to the temperatures and humidity in your cabin. The starboard side of the saloon has a couple of options. I've seen photos of it with twin armchairs here. You can also have this inbuilt sofa, a genuine nav station, which has great storage with it. The timber work is called white oak and it's married to this dark oak flooring. It looks really beautiful when mated to this cream upholstery. One of the nice features is this TV that can raise electrically from the cabinet. This runs a 15 kVA gen set, so you can have these sort of luxuries when you're on the water. Standard power is a 110 horsepower Yanmar with shaft drive. The owner's opted for the 150, which I think is a great power match here. Again, same size, it's a four cylinder motor, good access under the stairwell and also side hatches too for servicing. For the first time, Genoa has pushed the galley forward up against this main bulkhead. Brings some advantages, it allows them to have cupboards using space that would otherwise go to waste. Again, it's quite cosy in here, so when you're in a seaway, you can actually lock yourself in. You still get all the features. This runs the induction cooktop and, and oven. You've got a twin sink, Corian bench tops, plenty of storage. The galley flows right across to this starboard side. So you get all your fridges, your freezers, has an extra wine fridge and all your pantry space. Again, it's nice and easy access. Okay, looking at the cabins now, there are no less than 19 different layout versions available for this boat, which just shows how versatile modern cruiser races has to be. This cabin's in its open configuration at the moment. So you've got two double beds. These actually change in width. So you can have a large single, you can have a double or a queen, both sides of the boat and leave it nice and open like this when your guests know each other. Great feature here is this partition that can actually slides down all the way and creates two separate cabins. And of course you've got heads both sides of the compartment to service those cabins. The master cabin is pretty masterful in the way it's presented and the way it uses its space down here. Obviously you've got that garage on the port side but you've still got room for this huge queen-size bed that sits neatly on the starboard side 
beautiful access to it. Lots of headroom down here as well. Easy access, really plush furnishings as well. You can choose things like the headboard colors and all that type of thing. This one's got carpet, which I can tell you is really nice underfoot as well. On the port side, you've got access to the ensuite. You've also got a nice little lounge there for sitting. The Genoa Yacht 60 is a really impressive boat. Spend a few hours aboard and you'll just want to keep on sailing. Pricing starts around 1.6, but you're looking at about 1.8 to 2 million for a fully fitted yacht. For that, you get a pocket super yacht that doesn't hit the hip pocket too hard. I'm Mark Rothfield for Club Marine TV. See you next time.